You see, you must know that when I am teaching, most of the time, um, it is based on the direction I want to go. But when you ask your questions, I will know where you lack exactly. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. Because um, in my videos, I've made it clear to you that um, you can see. It's just that you don't want to see. <laughs> in my, in my uh, I think one guy asked me a question from one of the videos that, Prophet, how can you close your third eye? And I'm like... <laughs> When people want their third eye open, you want to close your third eye. <laughs> that teach me how to close my third eye. I'm like, this is serious. All right. So today I'm going to be, um, shortly, I'll be taking the questions with regards to um, the third eye and also how to see and also how to hear um, and also how to so feel free to ask every question along as I pick certain subjects I'm just gonna throw light on them but um, there's gonna be a special class that will be coming that I expect that everyone should be part of it because you see I'm just doing this for you not for any reason but just for you because I believe that it is time that God has to restore the glory of the latter days. And I pray that God indeed will use you for this. Amen. Hallelujah. So please, um, every one of you can see. The reason is simple. The first reason is that you are a man with a spirit, soul, and body. Yes. Now, I want to carry you to Genesis so that you will understand that in Genesis, there is something you need to know. There is something you need to know. You realize that when God created man, which is Adam, the story... I was told that God asked them not to eat of the fruit um, of knowledge and evil. I don't know if somebody got what I'm trying to say. Yes. What you don't know is this. Originally, Adam was... not blind or should I say what God did in the creation was that after creating Adam Adam's physical eyes were directly connected to the spirit which means Adam could see from the spirit's perspective he could see direct there was nothing like knowledge because in the realm of the spirit what we know as discovery are things that are reality. So Adam didn't need to study to know the names of the animals because he could see direct from the spiritual realm. Now, Eve came and Satan came and said something. Satan said, the day you eat this thing, your eyes will be open. Now, what kind of eyes was he talking about? Satan was talking about the eyes of your mind. And the Bible said when they ate it, the eyes of their mind were open. And we all know that when it comes to knowledge, knowledge takes its residence or have its place in our mind. Our spirits don't need knowledge. Our spirit interacts with the real things. 
but our mind needs knowledge. So eating that fruit means that being introduced to the realm of knowledge. And that is what corrupted the sight because the sight of the mind. Now, every human being is made of body, soul, and spirit. I want to ask you the first question, which I know you will answer me. Before you became born again, were you dreaming or not? So when you dream, who were you seeing in your dream? <laughs> you realize that you are seeing yourself. So even Abimelech, who was not, um, who was a pagan in those days, dreamt and saw the Lord. I don't know if we understand something here. When we talk about seeing, we just think it's about the fact that you open your, um, you just, a vision just passed and you catch it. That is seeing. No. In dreams, we see. So, originally, we were already, we are already seers. We interact with the spiritual realms as human beings, not as Christians. But there, there are so-called knowledges that have made things so complicated. Originally, we all dream. Originally, we all dream. We all have that sensations. Let's say, before you became born again, do you know that there were certain people that when they come closer to you, you don't feel ease? You are not happy within you. It, it's not about being born again or not being born again. That is the nature of your human spirit. Before you became born again. I want to you to understand that first. Because if you don't know that, you would think that you need some superior power to be able to do just the simple things God wants you to do. <laughs> the reason is that many are in search of people to lay hands on them to be able to see. Whilst originally you were even made to see. Did you see that? Now, when we talk about seeing, seeing has three different parts. Your spirit man can see. Your spirit man can see. I want to emphasize on that. Your spirit man can see. Your soul can see. And your natural eyes can see. You see, but you need to understand that each of them sees differently. By the end of the day, they connect or they misalign. Your spirit sees the real things about the realm of the spirit. Your knowledge cannot see the real things about the supernatural but can only imagine the supernatural but your physical sight cannot see the supernatural at all <laughs> so when we talk about seeing in the spirit your seeing is your spirit is the one that does the real seeing but your mind imagines how it will be, how it can be, how. So when you hear of an angel, what comes into your mind is a, 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 a creature with wings, right? Because that is what you have seen on telly. Especially those who have watched... Um, um, Hollywood movies, Nollywood, Africa movies, 
we assume angels always dress white is that not right exactly so the moment we hear of an angel what comes is that we begin to imagine how he looks like with wings flying but in actual sense you realize if you read the bible you get to understand that there are angels with no wings and those angels they need a ladder to ascend up and downwards <laughs> so jacob encountered those angels where he said i saw a ladder and the angels were descending and descending those angels didn't have wings so they needed a ladder but anyway so your mind your spirit and your body you see now every spirit can see every spirit as far as your uh, man is concerned can see we are going to do a seeing exercise here today dear we will do seeing exercise you see so we can all see i want you to tell yourself i can see i want you to tell yourself again i am a seer you see i had people trying to interpret um whether there is an anointing for a seer and an anointing for a hearer and i want you to have this in mind there is nothing like such thing each of them is a prophet they are all prophets but it depends on how they develop themselves you can develop your sight because you are more sensitive to your to see than to hear and there are those who are very sensitive trying to hear than to see you you understand whilst there are prophets who don't really desire to see or to hear but they have they are sensitive to feel so they uses their skin the 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 the, the feeling of their skin to interpret whatsoever that is happening around them so my question is that which part of you are you going to measure as a prophet or a prophetess which part of you is it your eyes is it your ears is it your nose because i literally smell angels most of times so when we say the prophetic we have limited it only to sight and ears it is beyond sight and ears so we always say seers and hearers no we have those who cannot see those who cannot hear but they can smell and we have those who can also just feel and we have those who can taste <laughs> so the prophetic is so opened but the question is which aspect of you will you measure i can see brother akim brown god bless you man of god a great man of god powerful man amen so we must understand and conclude because listen if you do not conclude for yourself that you can see there is there's going to be a confusion in your life every day you because the devil will keep intimidating and accusing you and bringing you in a point of guilt making you think that or accusing you thinking that you have nothing or your eyes are blind no whilst you were still yet a sinner you had spiritual eyes to see it is not the time that you are now born again that that eyes can be shut now 
when when we say an unbeliever a christian what is the difference when we are not saved the light of christ departed from us the, our source of life connecting to god in genesis was cut off so we didn't have the connection with god so in other words we dwelled in darkness and being in darkness we were seeing in the perspective of darkness we were seeing in the perspective of darkness so what did satan do satan now begins to introduce false light or what i call deceptive light and when satan introduces a deceptive light to you that light only talks more or opens your eyes to the things the devil can do and will do that is why we have the sangomes that is why we have the magicians that is how we have the fortune tellers that is how we have because the devil introduced this guy himself as an angel of light to them because no matter how good your eyes may be or your eyes are you cannot see until a light is introduced to you so satan is the light to all these false prophets you see that so they are able to see visions they are able to some of them are able to see visions some of them are able to see your name where you are coming from what have you mentioned details what have you but you should know that they are seeing from the light of the devil and that is the deceptive light don't forget the bible says that and satan can disguise himself uh, 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 what do we call it as an angel of light you see how that guy is exactly now we who are saved have received the true light the true light and that light is the light of Christ so in Isaiah chapter 60 the bible says that arise shine for thy light is come and when you read um uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verses 14 the bible still says that awake o sleeper and Christ will give you light to shine So our spirit man the light in our spirit is Christ. That is what the Bible will say that Christ in me is the hope is my hope of glory. So my spirit sees through the light of Christ. You see through the eyes of Christ. You see you hear through the ears of Christ. So your spirit can see My question is are you born again? Are you a Christian? Then you can see visions. You can see dreams. But now, let's look at something here. When the Christian is seeing visions, he uh, he must understand that he is seeing visions or what we call the third heavens vision the third heavens vision is the visions in the realm of god but when the sangoma or those witches sees visions they see visions in the second heavens so they see the intents of the devil whilst we see the intents of god are we clear so can we all dream do we all dream sorry yes do we all dream yes now the second way you must all be to you must know is that What I want to say is that ah, Are you not the same person who proclaims and say that you are a new creature or a new creation? 
old things are past. Behold, all things are new. So do you mean that your spirit man, the one God gave you new, is blind? No. So can I present to you, you don't need a prophet to open your spiritual eyes. I will come to the place where impartation is necessary. But with you, you don't need a prophet to open your eyes. Are we clear? You don't need me to open your eyes. You don't need. If a prophecy come and I open your eyes, it is not true. It is only spoken out of ignorance because the New Testament believer is a prophetic being in disguise. Remember what the Bible says, Afterwards I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So in this generation alone, our spirits have been equipped already to speak the mind of God. We are not in the days of the Old Testament where the people were living by the flesh. And I know where they picked that from. They picked that from um, the fact that Elisha prayed that Lord opened the eyes of my servant. The reason was that the servant was dwelling in darkness. The servant was in darkness. So God needed to introduce him to light by impacting light in his eyes to see. Whoa. I don't know if we, we are getting it. Have we gotten it to this point? Have we gotten it to this point? Hello? Oh, okay, I just want us to get to this point because I want us to do some seeing exercise here. Yes. And uh, some of you, I'll be interpreting what you are seeing for you. And some of you too, by the grace of God, I know God will use you to do that for us, to be able to do that. Yeah. So now, get to think about this. I'm saved. My spirit man's eye is intact. Now, the next thing here is that your spirit is saved. But your mind, let me just do the video and let's, um, yeah. Your spirit is saved. Your spirit is saved. Your spirit can see, but your mind, your mind, do you know why your mind, your mind is being saved. That is why you need knowledge for transformation. Our spirits are saved. Our minds are being saved. Our minds are yet to be saved. That is why we need true knowledge. The wrong knowledge will not make you see. The wrong knowledge about angels, the wrong knowledge about the supernatural, the wrong knowledge about entering the spirit realm. So most people have to do a lot of difficult things just to get into to, 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 to be able to enter the realm of the spirit. But it is as simple as A, B, C, D. Example, if I, have, if I should tell you that to enter the spirit realm is just the, an issue of changing your mind. Like just switching your mind from 
anything that looks carnal and start thinking about God or start thinking about God. You have just entered. You don't need fasting and prayer to enter the realm of the spirit. Mm -mm. It is the reason why the Bible says that to be spiritually minded, to be spiritually minded is peace and life. Mind, spiritual, what is spiritual mind? Start thinking when your mind is set on the things of God. To be carnally minded when your mind is still set on what to eat, how to go to work, how to make your boss happy, so many stuff, how to, you know. <laughs> so all those things hinders you. So if I, dis I say, let's just say, as we are talking right now, I can just switch my mind and begin to prophesy. That is how it works. How do I switch my mind? By just making up my mind. Now, let me talk to somebody. The moment I just make up my mind, the things of the Spirit are, are not things that you really need enough time to prepare before you can do them. Because I know people who have gone to the mountains and fasted for 20, let's say, for 60 days, just that they'll be able to see. And yet they came down from the mountain, they can see nothing. Whilst I am sitting in my room and I just change my mind. So it's a switch of mind. The, the reason why we are finding it so difficult is because our minds have been trained since from our childhood in our elementary schools, basic schools, um, to only take in things that are reasonable. You know, we want things that are reasonable, things that the mind can phantom. But anything that the mind cannot understand, they feel it is it is something else. You see that? So we're trained how to economize. We're trained how to <laughs> to associate. So we were trained how to manage. So even if God says tomorrow by this time, there shall be food in your house. <laughs> you have a big problem. You have a challenge. Because the world economy says that there's no money. Everywhere is crushing. But God is telling you, it shall be well with you. So you see that this is so huge that... Um, so when you start thinking, do I put in your mind? So in a prophetic meeting, when I just make up my mind, can I talk to you? Sometimes, when I just, when you just say, can I talk to you? The moment you shift your mind to talking to the person, you should know at that instant, you are not alone. You are in the realm of God. I know what you are thinking of. As for me, I need to blow in tongues before I get there. <laughs> No, 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 no. Don't complicate what God has simplified. Don't. When you do, you are going to miss it. That is how it is. And I will show you why your seeing have problems. You see? So, the mind... The mind when you switch it let me ask you a question can you dwell on the things of God with your mind 24 7 without going back to be carnal somebody said no <laughs> 
But are you not the same by are you not the same person who reads the Bible and the Bible says that you shall meditate meditate day in you see that so it is possible it is possible brother it is possible to just position your mind on what that scripture is saying is that just put you program your mind on the things of god in your marriage can you be thinking it in god's way in your business can you be thinking it in god's way in your ministry can you be thinking it in god's way when when you do that you have the you are developing the capacity to hear god's voice every minute but the small chance you are worried the least thing you are provoked the small thing that will happen you, you are so guilty oh god will he ever forgive me oh my god oh my god god i am finished baba i am finished that is your problem you have filled your mind with all kinds of things so if god is talking your worries are covering your ears You see that? So I'm going to show you how to clean your mind, wash your mind and be ready and focus. Yes. So um if you are not hearing any code of gazing, code of whatever is because I am just trying to remove that thing code and let's deal with um let's deal with it so real and uh um in a more clearer sense yes yes so now let me just share my story to you i think that will help you too are you ready for that on how i do it or i i clear myself on a daily basis all right now okay okay thank you now you see um when god called me and i discovered i had the prophetic gift um because a prophet spoke initially i used to see but i didn't really put it in myself that maybe this is from god or it was not from god i cannot differentiate and all that yeah it comes once in a while until one day a prophet of god spoke in the church and said that you are a prophet and i believed i i believed because he didn't point to me directly but um he just said there is a great prophet here the moment i heard great prophet you can you see how ladies are falling but 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 you know our ladies oh my goodness they were just falling like that they were falling and i just turned and looked at them and i said whether you fall or you don't fall the prophet is still talk talking about me <laughs> so i i accepted the word within and in me when i was going home all i was talking within myself i'm a great prophet ha, i would do great i would do great the, because you, you know that um uh, uh, um new convict kind of happiness joy i had it i was so eager because when i heard that and i went home and uh we were praying in in uh, a meeting and they said hold your partners and and pray for so whilst we were praying i said lord this place let me test when i tested when we were finished i was like i positioned my mind i lord let me know something about this one i was saying it in my head then i had a respond you see your problem your challenge is that anytime you ask god a question in your mind you want a quick respond that is an error
don't rush for quick response. Just relax your mind and your nerves. It will come to you like a toth, poof, just like that. It will just come, poof, like that. You don't need to struggle to try to know it. No, just ask the question and wait for it. Some ask and go ahead and answer themselves. <laughs> of course, I'll come to that part, how people ask and still answer themselves. Yes. So now, get this clearly. Get this clearly. So, um, I used to think that the prophetic itself will come. You know, as you are growing, it will naturally come. But I didn't know there was work to do. I know that was what some of you were thinking. When the Holy Ghost is pleased at his own will, he will let it manifest. Who told you? <laughs> Who told you? There is work to do. If you see anybody doing anything exceptional in the prophetic, it is not... This thing we call, we always crown it and say grace. If it is grace, everybody should be doing it. No. There's work involved. There is certain things they have put, kept in place. There are certain disciplines they have put in their lives. So know this. So I used to think that way, like the way some of you think, you know, I'll just be a church boy, I'll be praying, I'll be doing my duty, you know, but God will use me. That is not it. There's work to do. Yes. This is why there was what we call the prophetic training. There was the prophetic school in the days of Samuel. You see that? Samuel built a prophetic school where he trained prophets. You realize that when um, Saul was anointed, he told Saul to go. He'll meet a company of prophets on the way. And when you go to Rama, where Samuel stayed, there was a school of the prophets where he, they were taught how to hear because he, Samuel himself, was taught by Eli. Eli showed him there is a way because that voice you heard, you thought it's my voice. No, that's God's voice for you. So the man Eli, who was an experienced priest, taught him so the guy grew and through the teaching of Eli and the, the experience he had whilst walking with God on a daily basis, he, not, he took note of certain things and began to raise other prophets. And I strongly believe that even Elijah was a product of Samuel. was a product of Samuel's prophetic school. Because when this guy was running to and fro, he got to a point, he said, God, I'm the only prophet left. Because that guy was among a company of prophets, but he only chose to distinguish himself by confronting a stronghold in the name of King Ahab. And that brought him to the limelight. You see that? What are you doing different from the rest of the prophets? That is what will bring you to the world. Okay. So now. And you realize that when that was done, when Elijah took over the prophetic school and was teaching the prophets, 
until Elisha succeeded him and continued teaching the prophet. So Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah, all those great prophets, they have their sources traceable to the school. So there is something to do. Something to do. One man, uh, I think in a group, somebody asked a question some few days ago that why is it that there are people who never trained for the prophetic yet they can uh, they can prophesy and we cannot and I said it is never true <laughs> that cannot be because you must tr be trained how to package even the word of prophecy how to present it how to talk to people on authority and people below authority you see that exactly so everything you need training yeah so let's um let me open it let me move now to um how i do clear my mind now so that was what i thought until i went to because i realized that ah, i was not seeing the flow i was not seeing the flow i was not i go to youtube watch videos and by then um i will go to passion java's um youtube yeah, yeah and I, I i tried because i was so hungry for the thing so i go there try to watch one of the videos it says how to see with your third eye ah. i downloaded i watched it downloaded i when i watched to the latter part i thought he would point to the exact thing this man never pointed to the exact thing i said ah. then i realized that hey so when at all will we to <laughs> be able to see small small <laughs> Yes. So your story, I have been there. I watch, I'll go and watch uh, Prophet Hubert. I'm like, God, let his grace fall on me. Grace fall on me. And I will even dream that this man will give me, a, give me something. Sometimes a mantle. Sometimes, you know, I'm walking with him sometimes. But when I wake up, the eyes are still... <laughs> <laughs> how many of you have been there before i've tried I've, I've made people laid hands on me like that like that like that like that they've laid hands look yet nothing happened even cockroach you can see yeah so that is the story of how i went through just like some of you You've been there before and you are still going through that. But I want to clarify your mind on that now. Let me tell you. A man of God can lay hands on you and you will see instantly. But with without knowledge, you will you can't maintain it. You cannot maintain the flow. Yeah. So what happened was that until I met um, one man of God who I went to him and said, Sir, I have a problem with my prophetic ministry, my gift. And he, he told me that um, he told me It is not about laying on of hands. I should go and pray. It will come by itself. Wow. I did all the prayer gymnastics. I didn't see the fullness of it. Because you should know the key to enter. Until I was 
stayed in and I came across Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 2 that was what changed the entire thing he said I will stand upon my watch Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 1 verses 1 just 1 because as and if you want to understand it well read from the amplify version not King James amplify you see that what did the guy say the man said that the prophet said that because in chapter 1 I will always say this in chapter 1 this man was busy attacking God with words why are you not doing this why are you making people said so many things and he never heard God speaking back to him then he said I have caught a secret and this secret is the secret to see so what is what was the secret when you read from the Amplified Verse, she said, God, he was now trying to tell God he was sorry. So he says, God, I know I've been rushed to speak to you this way, but now I will in my thinking stand upon my watch, I stand upon the tower, and I will watch Watch with what? With my thinking. To see what he will say to me. You see that? So there I realized that this whole thing works with the mind. Because there can never be a way that your spirit you can just see like that without mind interruption. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how will you be able to work on your mind so that you can at least see by 70%? See by 70% or 80%? Then, when I started the first day, then I remembered in those times, the first person I held the hand and I was talking to God in my mind and the answer came. When I asked the person, he said, yes, it is true. When I remembered that, then I said, ah, that this is the thing. Then, I took that upon myself. So you see the way we are talking right now. If I say, can I prophesy to you? And uh, let's say your name is Gestina. And I just say Gestina. And I begin to imagine you standing in my mind and I said Lord what is her problem wow 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 <laughs> wow I am seeing what when I just imagined I just saw a pen about to sign a document and the document that I saw is a document that has to be do with properties that has to do with properties and I saw the pen was, was signing itself without anybody holding it 
But you see, don't think it is shallow. It is not. It is not. If we want to go deeper into this, there is a more deeper. Uh, 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 um, we can enter the realm where we can mention the names, the numbers, and what of you. But you see, when I start, I begin to imagine him, and I was like, God, what about him? Immediately, in an instant, a paper and a pen came into the screen of my mind. I don't know if we are getting something here. Are you listening? Yes. And the reason is this, woman of God, I am seeing a property about to be released. Are you listening, woman of God? Yes. About to be released to you. Because I don't know, but I saw that whilst it was it was right, and the Lord said, this is a property, a, a documentation that has been signed already. You see that? You see that? So, you see, in, in the spirit realm, you initiate for God to engage. Don't worry, we'll get there. Let me fast track things so that you will understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, somebody say, Professor, I beg. It is time. I want to teach you how to also do it. <laughs> So focus on that one. <laughs> Amen. So now, listen to this carefully. So I'm going to be very practical in what I'm doing here. When you want to see in the spirit, you must free your mind from guilt. You must free your mind from arrogance, from anything that really puts your mind in a cage. I have been in a place, I've been in those places where I easily got offended by certain actions of people and it hindered me a lot. Or maybe you did the wrong thing and you have this guilt. Will God even talk to me? Will God talk to me? Now that I've committed the sin, will he talk to me? Have you been there before? Your problem is that you are underestimating God's power of love. That is why you are thinking that way. So you see, and you must remove that self-righteous mindset from you. Thinking God speaks to holy people, only, or perfect people. So the moment you do the least mistake, ha, ah, he won't talk to me again. I am finished. No. I have studied something and I know that the Spirit came to help our infirmities, not to condemn us in our infirmities. So no matter how you are wrong, you need to know that the Spirit is in to raise you back to your original state. And not to condemn you. A lot of us believe in. So when we, we do this. When we do anything. 
maybe by mistake at that instant we are like the spirit has left <laughs> holy spirit has left that so if you don't have a good knowledge on the holy spirit you see that you'll be hindered how can the spirit live like that <laughs> is it not the same spirit that came to help you or came to comfort you or came to raise you or build you so even in your okay let's just say that whilst you are still yet a sinner christ saved you he came to you talked to you gave you the message of salvation now that you are born again and maybe there are certain elements in your life like anger like um you know those little things that brings about your uh, uh so the spirit is there to help you overcome those things because i used to all those things shut my my sight and my hearing because i used to be guilty of never being perfect to do anything for god i know somebody have been there before <laughs> yes until i killed it i killed it because i know so overcome everything every those things overcome it by accepting that god is gracious though it is not good to walk in sin as a believer which 100% we must all try our best not to do but when things chip in in your journey you don't surrender to them because um i used to i may be fasting and now and maybe by mistake you know you put something in there and that ends it <laughs> You are guilty. Oh God, I have offended him. You see that? I know a lot of you have been there. So all those informations distract the mind. Until I killed it. I I killed it because God made me steady so deeply that I knew that look, God is not moved by your fasting and prayer. God speaks whether you fast or you don't fast. God speaks. Just that fasting positions you to be able to hear God well. Now let's proceed. So now, what happened is this. I have been in a place where depression ministry is not going well. And you know when ministry is not going well people are misbehaving with your ministry you are like oh god and you are let's say you prepare a powerful message you came to the pulpit to preach and somebody would just step your leg <laughs> from the entrance you need to be able to overcome that all because as a prophet your greatest tool you should be using is love because if you don't have love you will not be able to do much you will not be able to see much you will not because it is not because god will hinder those things from you but your the state of your mind cannot accept any revelation Are we there? So the Bible will say that blessed did I say blessed no the Bible says that eyes have not seen nor ears heard neither have it entered into the heart of man what God has planned and purpose for his children 
but has revealed it unto us who love him. Which means love is a very key thing to be able to see. Because the moment love sets in your heart, it tries to eliminate any kind of anger, whatever, hatred, bitterness, you know. So you are, no, you are no longer moved by those things. And I tell you, if you get to this level where you, you don't have those things within you, or you, you are able to overcome those things, fear, whatever, I t you will do well. Uh, you will do well. You will just be sitting and seeing. So simple. Love filters the mind. I like what the, you, the uh, um, I think Prince have written. Love filters the mind. It, it washes the mind. And not the love for your boyfriend, I beg. The love for God. The love for God washes your mind. Because when you love God, you see that, oh God. So that is how it is. It filters your mind. I used to become so angry. And you know that the prophetic ministry, we have been made to believe that Prophets are so, you know, um, they are full of hunger, some kind of thing. You know, yes, the, a typical African prophet who is not learned, hey, don't joke with him, oh. He can curse you and curse your grave. <laughs> your grave. You see that? Yes. So because of that, they can't also do much. Yeah, so... I realize love is the answer. Yes. So as I'm sitting right now, I'm not thinking about anybody. Mm. I am not thinking about who will kill me and who will not kill me. My mind is so clean. So when I, I say, can I prophesy to you immediately, the information begins to flow. Yes. So, what are some of the things that helps you to clear your mind? Number one is meditation. 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 You see, meditation is something. Is that if you see number one, it is what cleans the mind. Because the more you meditate on God's word, the more you feel the love of God in your heart. Meditation. When you stop talking about people and you stop talking about God, you realize that the the hatred is leaving. The 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 bitterness is going. Now watch this. Uh, listen to this. Um when you speak in tongues and pray in the Holy Ghost what you are doing is this you are edifying your spirit not your mind yes meditation is what edifies the mind but speaking and prayer in tongues builds your spirit so a lot of us are weak in our minds because we do not spend time to meditate. We, yes, meditate. Meditation. Daily, the spirit will wake me up just to meditate. Meditate. Just read a scripture. And it's unfortunate a lot don't know how to meditate. It, 
is serious. Now, when we say meditation, meditation is simply the act of making the idea of God's word or the concept of God's word a reality in your life by studying it, thinking it, saying it, praying with it, and acting according to it. That's meditation. Yeah. So I pick the Bible I will read today. Blah, 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 blah. You know, read. Maybe combined precept upon precept, line upon line. As you read the thing, you get the idea or the a concept in the scripture. That is what others call revelation. But let's just use concept in the scripture. What do you do? Let it be in your mind. You begin to think about it. So how will I move with this? Does it mean when I move with it, it's true? And begin to see yourself mentally, imaginably, walking according to you know, a lot of pastors only read to go and preach and excite crowd. But they don't read to make the thing practical even in their lives. So they end up not even seeing a miracle happening. Like when I read about money, miracle money, when Jesus did miracle money, I read about the miracle money. From that day, I begin to imagine myself praying and dollars were raining. I'm seeing it like in my imagination, I was seeing it. So the moment I kept seeing it, I chose not to see any currency. I was I chose to see dollars. Once I kept imagining that, then I was praying, God, let this miracle happen. I need that level of authority. I need to. So whilst I did that, the whole day, I used a whole day because I was so desperate and hungry to see that happen. And when I did that, went to the service, and when I spoke, it happened. It happened. Why? Because I read it, I imagined seeing myself doing it, and I took it into prayer. When I wake up from, even if I'm praying and I sleep, I wake up, I just still see continually to see myself whilst the meeting is in the evening. When I entered the evening, when I entered the meeting, it happened. I'm telling you something. It happened. Yes. So that is how to command miracles. And testimonies yeah so meditation clears the mind because it doesn't it doesn't make you dwell your mind on the things of the world but you are fixed on God and that is what commands results so can you use 30 minutes in the morning to pray meditate one hour to do it maybe the days you are free can you use a lot of hours, spend hours just to meditate? If you can do that, I tell you, you are going to have an extraordinary ministry. Yes. 
when you see shepherd bushiri commanding things brother meditation is involved yes are you ready for the next um thing i'm gonna so meditation is key it washes your mind so please can you in a day do that if you cannot do it you have issues you will have issues yeah. the more you try to you meditate you the amazing things that will happen it will shock you yes it will shock you The truth is, a lot of us dwell on people's revelations. But sometimes the Holy Spirit want to dwell, deal with you based on your rev the revelation, a, a, a personal revelation he want to give you. Yeah. So now let's now look at simply how to see. Is everybody here? Yeah. Okay. Let's say you call somebody or you are looking at somebody in the service. The truth is visions comes in two ways two main ways we have what we call the coded vision and the decoded vision coded visions are visions that comes in symbols in numbers in the letters but mean deep things they mean a lot yeah so if i ask us to close our eyes or see right try to see right now you may see a symbol you may see a number you may see something real but the question is how do you see deeper or details about it? Is that not right? So, let's say this. Let's say that. What I'm teaching you, try it. Try it. Don't just take the knowledge, but practice. Go do it. Can all of us close our eyes and begin to see? Like, just say, Holy Spirit, show me something. The moment you say, show me something, wait. Just relax your nerves. Don't try to breathe in, breathe. I mean, just relax yourself and say, show me. Whatever that drops into your, you see in your sight, deep, deep within you, in your mind, at this instant, whether a number, whether a name, whether an address, whether a place, what have you, just tell me. Close your eyes. The reason why I said close your eyes is for concentration, to be able to concentrate and not because it is special, no, but to concentrate and to focus within you.
Okay. Now open your eyes. Somebody said he saw 27. Okay. Hello. 27. Who is that? Somebody said I saw a building. Another person. I saw the rib cage of a woman containing the heart. Okay. Next. I saw a beautiful garden with a beautiful river with flowers and butterflies. Correct. Move on. What again? Is that all? <laughs> White clouds. Okay. Now, you realize that each of you, I saw myself at a house, but there was a lady with skin disease. <laughs> Powerful. You see, all of you, what you have seen, okay, I saw a whistle given to someone, okay, what you have seen is not wrong. It is very accurate. But do you know what? It is a start of a prophecy. It is a beginning of a prophetic word. So God has shown you something you can start with. Because the rest of the information is behind that word. Uh, the brother said one name I remember is Dwayne. But he didn't see powerful but can i tell you you actually saw the name but you thought it was a thought because they told you that seeing in the spirit means that opening your um it's like opening your you know you see it like tv screen that is not how we see in the spirit You just saw, but you thought you hear. You didn't hear. You saw. Now watch this. Can we close our eyes once again and think about our house? If you are in your room, think about the outside or your premises your your garage or your something can you think about maybe the outside of your house or if you are staying somewhere can you see your house okay i hope it's done thank you Open your eyes. Uh, there's a brother called um, Miguel. Or oh, Miguel. <laughs> now watch this. Do you know that right now, you just saw in the spirit, but you thought you were imagining. When I close my eyes right now and I what's the name Miguel Miguel when I close my eyes right now I don't know where you are 
I have no idea where you are coming from. Naturally. But supernaturally, I need to initiate by letting you know I can see or I want to see. Maybe in the prophecy, this is how navigation works. So I begin to close my eyes. Or somebody may open his eyes. Because sometimes if you open your eyes, you can be distracted by sight. So a lot prefer, some prefer to close their eyes. But it is not anything. Uh -huh. Just to be able not to be distracted yeah so i open my eyes or close my eyes and i say in this realm of the spirit i am standing in front of a door whilst i said i'm standing in front of the door spiritually i am still I am still searching for the antenna to connect to the real thing. But I am initiating with my mind by faith. You know, when the real thing comes, you don't need faith again. <laughs> when the real thing comes, you don't need faith. But because the real thing has not come, you need faith to pull or to push. So I begin to say, in the realm of the spirit, I am standing in a place. And it's like, whilst I am trying to say it's like, all this is by faith. Then... The spirit of revelation and the spirit of prophecy begins to tell me or shows me just a small little thing or shows me because I am just standing at a certain place where I am standing I don't know but I just saw a missionary school. <laughs> That's a, a, the brother I'm talking to. Um, me, 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 well, me, well. I just saw a school that is like a missionary, like this. Um, I don't know whether I should say it's a church school or something. Yes, I saw it. Now, when I saw it, with the same faith, what you see is drawing closer, drawing closer, drawing closer. The time you realize the date or the number of your house will appear. I don't know if you are getting what I'm trying to say. But the initiation is by faith. Because in my imagination, right now as I'm talking to you, uh, right now as I'm talking to you, I'm not feeling that well. But I wanted to have really traveled with you. So I can say, can I come to your house? You are like, yes, enter. Can I enter? Enter. The prophet saying, can I enter? Can I enter? No. He's still looking for a spiritual signal. He has not seen anything yet. <laughs> but once he says, can I enter? In his mind, he's asking the Holy Ghost, which streets or where can I pass? And a sign can just come. Maybe a church can just come into his mind and say, I am standing in front of a certain church. And I begin to move. And I saw what looks like a foot 
restaurant. They serve food. And the people there, I saw them dressed in orange. <laughs> I don't know if you are getting what I'm trying to say. I don't know if somebody is getting what I'm trying to say. Is somebody getting what I'm trying to say here? Hello? Uh huh. Because it seems a lot of us, we don't, we, we fear to initiate that. We fear to start that. But the African prophet don't care now. Uh -uh. <laughs> he will start. Yes. He start by faith and the real thing pop up. Just like when you are praying for somebody, do you know that you pray from the, your faith? In the name of Jesus, I decree you are healed by faith. Once you are now waiting for the real thing to manifest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Miguel or Miguel, do you know this thing? I am seeing a certain name. I just saw this name. Is it Espirit? Es, uh, Spiritual, Spiritual, something like that. What is that? Okay, because I saw Spirito, Spirito, and it was written, they said um, something, <laughs> hey, what a name, something Spirito, uh, 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 what do we call it? The name is um, like revival something. Ch this is a chapel, like a church. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh huh. I saw this. I saw this thing called a spirito, like spirito something. S Santos or Santos or Santos. <laughs> yes. Can I tell you something? I am seeing Santo the spirit written on your forehead. Are you listening to me? Are you listening? And what the Lord is telling me is that there have been several days now you have drawn your attention to focus more on the Spirit. To focus to focus more on the spirit which means that I am seeing a fellowship that you have developed constantly with the spirit in this recent times I don't know if you are getting what I'm trying to say and the Lord is telling me that there is a message he has kept in your mouth about the Holy Spirit that the world needs to hear of it. And that message is gonna open you up. Do you know this name like, is it Andrew? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Did I say Andrew? Yeah, Andrian or Andrian something. Because what I am seeing, I'm just trying to see you. It's not like I'm trying to prophesy to you, but I just, I'm seeing Andrian or Andrian something. I see another name like, is it Tena or Tena or Tena or something like that. Yeah. And I am seeing another name called, is it Caroline or Caroline or something. And the last name I saw is Mariam. Now, tell me you don't know about it. <laughs> Can you hear me, sir? Eggs. Exactly. You see, now, I am just trying to do scene. Uh, who has this name? Is it Pedro or Pedro? Wow. What is the name of Peter in... Um, Peter. Do you know Peter? Let me go to English. But let me ask you, do you have any connection with uh, Spain? Are you sure? Hmm? Hello? 